We're here at IBC 2018 at the Black Magic Design booth, and we're going to talk about Black Magic Raw. Black Magic Raw. That's dramatic. Yeah, it's mystical. <laughs> Red Shark at IVC 2018 is brought to you by... Mythos! Adobe! Black Magic Design. Okay. So, uh, Greg, tell me about this, because RAW, it doesn't... I'll be honest, it doesn't sound exciting when you first hear it. It's like, it's just another company yeah. coming up with some kind of RAW solution. Well, I guess you have a story about oh, that. Oh no, it's very exciting for us. Yeah. We think that this is probably one of the biggest announcements we've made in our cinema products since we first came into cameras. And it offers something truly unique and really revolutionary for us in the cameras. Blackmagic RAW is a new way for us to think about how our cameras process. And for us, it's a new dynamic um, codec for us that will support camera through to post-production within a, similar, a single codec process and really improve the quality, but also the speed and the performance of handling and working with raw media entirely. Um, one of the complications we've always sort of known about raw is to step into a raw workflow is committing a lot of time in post. The quality is always there, but it has demands around data size, processing, a lot of GPU, CPU process. Um, but if you went the other way and you go into a video profile, you're already compromising or maybe working in a 422 process that throws away a lot of color information. So we were looking for something that kind of works in the middle of those and gives you the, the, the benefits of RAW, but the speed and the efficiency of, of staying in those kind of uh, non-RAW formats. And Blackmagic RAW really answers that. It's a codec for us that delivers a number of options in the camera system, and Ursa Mini Pro is updated today with Camera 6 to offer these to our customers, and Resolve 15.1 supports that. So it stays to that ethos we've always had with the cameras where we talk about capturing in the highest quality and retaining it, and then speed and quality of service out of Resolve in terms of delivery. And Blackmagic RAW starts that process for us. Yeah, so uh, you don't announce any new cameras in the sense that uh, all your old cameras work with Blackmagic RAW, right? Not right now, no. So it's going to be okay. Ursa Mini Pro today. Yeah. Update has gone up online. This is free for all Blackmagic owners of this camera. Um, we're going to look at what we can do with Pocket and the new Pocket camera 4K. Um, that's going to be something we'll add in due course. That camera is sort of getting ready to ship. And then what we'll do then is we'll consider the legacy support that we can provide for older cameras. Um, in reality, there might be some cameras now that are a number of years old that just don't have the power and the performance under the hood to really encode it. One of the couple of things that's also different about this codec is the way that we work with the camera. So what we've done is we've, we've changed the way that raw packaging behaves. So with Cinema DNG, in the original uh, RAW systems in all our cameras, basically just view a pixel dump of the sensor. We package that into a container for Cinema DNG, and it's an image-based sequence that then just goes into Resolve. And Resolve does the debayering, then allows you to color process and deliver at whatever level you want. That process is part of the problem, so we've changed the way that works. So with Blackmagic RAW, we now have a partial demosaic built into the camera. So that means we're using some of the camera processing to actually do the heavy lifting. So that process of color decision and the way that we work with those color uh, sciences starts in the camera. This is paired with our generation four color science as well that we introduced with Ursa Broadcast earlier in the year and is in pocket camera 4K. Um, and then within that, the Blackmagic RAW file then goes into DaVinci Resolve where we can work with those color profiles, finish the demosaicing process and work however we want to in a grading step. The codec is also profiled to the sensor. So we've actually taken the 4.6K sensor of the Ursa Mini Pro, and it's the first one we've worked with within the new Blackmagic RAW format. So we're actually able to get cleaner, sharper images than we did previously with the Cinema DNG RAW. And we're also able to get around a stop, stop and a half in shadows um, from that sensor that we couldn't previously do. And that's all down to the new color science and the new demos egg that works in this camera. And again, yeah, that's something we want to try and put into other cameras as, as far as we can. Yeah, and then in terms of data rates, stuff like that, is there something you can tell me something yeah. like that as well? So what you'll find in the menu system on the Ursa Mini Pro, if you download it and start working with it today, is there's now a new option that sits along RAW. It's still there for the Cinema DNG if you want that option. All the ProRes family that we've had previously, we now will have Blackmagic RAW in there. There's two standards. We have a compression-based system, which is a ratio, so there's three to one. 5 to 1, 8 to 1, and 12 to 1. And obviously, data rate scales. You know, the more compression, it's the scale of recording for a longer period of time. 
roughly speaking around in uh, 4.6K, 30 frames a second, is going to record for about half an hour on a 256 card and then go up to around 96 minutes, 100 minutes if you go to 12 to 1. So it's a sliding scale. What we have in the system as well though is something called constant quality. When you go into this option on the camera and you see in the software, you've got a choice between something called Q0 and Q5. And what we're doing here is we're using the quantizer of the codec to make decisions for us about how to dynamically improve the quality frame by frame. So if we choose Q0, the quantizer is doing very little work, but rather than having a constant bit rate, it becomes variable. By variable, we have a base level, which is, you know, it's never going to go below a certain quantity, but if the frame requires us to put some more data in there to retain color or quality of the image, it will raise the data rate up and then dynamically adapt it as it goes. So would that be in a, a low light situation, for yeah, example? Or? Absolutely. So Q0 is, is, is the best option in the camera to get you know, the highest quality out of the Blackmagic RAW with the Ursa Mini Pro with the 4.6K sensor. And then the, the compression options are there based on your workflow. So if you wanted to work in high-end VFX or you're shooting at the highest possible quality you want, then the Q0 or the 3 to 1 are the best options. Then you go down through to 12 to 1 at the bottom end. And the Q5 sits happily in the middle somewhere for you. So you've got this target base rate for the data speed off the sensor. With that logical, intelligent process, it knows the sensor. It's processing frame by frame and adapting for you. So we're always making sure that the purest quality and the precise color fidelity is coming off that camera at all times. So, and then looking at the future, so you now announced this. Yeah. Uh, feels like the first step in a, maybe a, a broader philosophy almost of, of getting people to accept like that yeah. the Blackmagic RAW format might be the new de facto standard. This is where it's exciting for us because we think that Cinema DNG worked for us and gave us that raw power and it was, it was massive for us in terms of the way that we wanted the ethos of our cinema products to be delivered and the link between camera and post. But what Blackmagic RAW does for us is it does lay a foundation for future development both for us and for the industry we hope. So today as well we have when you download the camera package and the installer we're going to be providing an SDK for free. So this is a software decoder. We're going to invite third parties to take a look at that, hopefully integrate Blackmagic RAW into their own software. So our future camera development will continue. There's some of the hardware options maybe we can look at in the future. But the software decoder can become something free to the industry and maybe you know, help more creatives get better quality out of the products they want to work with. Um, and alongside that as well, there's a new, um, more efficient metadata system that works with the camera. So we, we will write metadata, as most camera systems will, into the Blackmagic RAW files that can be accessed through your post-production systems. But our new metadata also has a sidecar option. So what this means is the camera effectively is always recording in a, in a RAW mode. But if you were to apply a, a video profile, like a Rec. 709, a Rec. 2020, or you use the extended video mode, which is a Blackmagic um, sort of dynamic range option, that information is stored as metadata. So you can go into post-production, and if you decided, actually, I did want to do this in RAW, I didn't want to do it in 709, you can tell Resolve to ignore that metadata, and the RAW information is there underneath. And likewise, you can actually adapt that metadata, use Resolve to make changes. So you can adjust the gamma, you can change some of the color fidelity, you can change your exposure, and then update that metadata. So as it travels through post-production, everybody gets to see those decisions and adapt and change with them. So we've thought about not just how to get the best quality off the camera, it really is end-to-end. -end. So it's from sensor all the way through to delivery at the grade. The metadata system happens to support that as well. Oh, amazing, thank you so much. You're welcome. Really looking forward to, uh, to seeing this. I'm looking forward to seeing what people shoot with it. It's yeah. going to be fantastic. Yeah, great. Thanks, awesome. man. You're welcome. If you don't want to miss anything from IBC 2018, then make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come on, hit that button.